Welcome to Philosophy Insights. In this video, we want to talk about a presentation by Professor Thomas DiLorenzo and a presentation by Professor Tom Woods. The topic is historical revisionism. Professor DiLorenzo starts with examples of professors with a political left agenda who started to rewrite history to favor their narrative. Uh, when I was doing research on Lincoln and the Civil War, I ran across uh, some statements by Kenneth Stamp, who was a one-time president of, I think it's called the American Historical Association, one of the big associations of academic historians, who came right out and said, this was in the 1960s, he said, we need to rewrite the history of the Civil War and Lincoln and all that to support the Johnson administration agenda, the Great Society and the civil rights laws and all that. And, and, uh, and I learned, and, and so they did. And so they did. And so if you, there, there seems to have been a demarcation of uh, some of the older research I ran across in my research by people like William Archibald Dunning, who was a Columbia professor at uh, Tom's alma mater at the turn of the 20th century. And he did this fabulous research and he had a number of PhD students who all produced dissertations that turned into books. And you read these books and you read this research and you, you could never tell if he was taking one side or another regarding the Civil War. It was all just really good research on what happened and, and, what, and who was involved and so forth. And that all changed. That all changed, especially beginning in the 1960s. And Eric Foner, who was also one of, one of Tom's professors at Columbia. No, I avoided uh, you, Eric Foner. Oh, you avoided Eric Foner? <laughs> yeah, he's a you know, well-known uh, uh, Civil War. He taught the Civil War course in a graduate program in history, I guess, at Columbia for decades. I, guess, I think he's retired now. He said the same thing. I ran across, across a quote from him saying the same thing, rewriting history. And of course, that's, you know, isn't that what we used to uh, criticize the Soviet Union for doing, rewriting Russian history to make themselves, you know, to aggrandize themselves? Now, very interesting. If you use Microsoft Bing search for historical revisionism, the first result that comes up is an entry at Rational Wiki. They differentiate between legitimate and illegitimate revisionism. Very telling one sub-entry under legitimate revisionism is Marxism. And you can already guess which form of revisionism they find legitimate. But not all change of historical facts come from the left wing. Professor DiLorenzo gives the following examples of fact bending by right wing conservative scholars. And uh, there's, a, there's a book called The Legacy of the Civil War by Robert Penn Warren, the famous poet and, uh, and novelist, All the King's Men, Robert Penn Warren. And he was asked by Time Magazine to write a book about on the centennial of the Civil War in 1960. And one of the things he said in there is that the war gave the U.S. government a treasury of virtue. And by, and by that he meant whatever the U.S. government did from then on was virtuous by virtue of the fact that it was the U.S. government that was doing it. And he pointed to uh, our interference in World War I and World War II, we, whatever, Vietnam War. If he, you know, had, had he gone on, had he lived to this day, he would have been, he would have said the Iraq War, the you know, Afghanistan, you know, it's, it's the U.S. government that is doing it. And then he said, however, to believe this uh, about all this virtue, you have to forget a lot of history. You have to forget that uh, Lincoln in his first inaugural address pledged his everlasting uh, support for Southern slavery, even endorsing a constitutional amendment that would have prohibited the federal government from ever interfering with slavery. He, he, he began his first inaugural address by promising to never touch slavery. Uh, the War Aims Resolution of the United States Congress in 1861 said we have no intention of disturbing slavery. You know, uh, this is about saving the Union. Lincoln said the exact same thing many times over and over again. You have to ignore all of Lincoln's speeches in the Lincoln-Douglas debates where he said, I as much as any man want the superior position to belong to the white race and, and things things of that sort. You have to forget all that in order to believe in this, this everlasting virtue of, of the, the national government. And the role of the Straussians in this regard is to keep us in the dark about these, these things. They, they have rewritten, Jaffa himself rewrote history. Uh, his most famous book is all a book about rhetoric. It's a book about Lincoln's speeches. I told someone this morning who was asking me about this, 
that I could make, I could probably make Bill Clinton come out as the second coming of Jesus Christ if I only wrote about the prettier sounding lines in some of his speeches, as far as that goes. And so, and that's what Jaffa did in, in his career. His, his PhD from the University of Chicago, after all, was in rhetoric. It wasn't in history or anything related to civil war or anything else. And so you have to, you know, Robert Penn Warren was right. You have to forget all these things in order to buy the idea of, uh, especially of this uh, holy national government. And the, uh, the, the neoconservatives, uh, Straussians, are proponents of a highly centralized government and, and the warfare state, especially the war. So you have Foner and Kenneth Stamp uh, rewriting history in order to perpetuate and expand the welfare state and then you have the, these neocons, uh, the Claremont Institute and the Straussians, rewriting hit the same history and joining in with uh, Foner and, and Stamp and the others to, to empower the warfare state. One episode that historians completely rewrote is the Industrial Revolution. Here is Professor Woods. But it's a nice little volume edited by F.A. Hayek called Capitalism and the Historians. And in that book, Hayek has an introduction called History and Politics. And it's one of my favorite things that Hayek ever wrote. And in there, he talks a little bit about the historical controversy about the Industrial Revolution, but he also talks more generally about the importance of history when it comes to evaluating current events. And he says that if we get history wrong, we're gonna get current, the way we interpret current events wrong. And if we look at history and we think, well, the 19th century was the century of the robber barons, who were monopolists because the free market tends toward concentration and so of course you're going to have monopolists and they exploited consumers and raised prices and limited production, then that's going to influence the way you think about antitrust law today if you get, if you get the historical narrative wrong. So it's important to get history right because history indeed is where so many people look, whether they realize it or not, to get their current day political views. Indeed, if you look at old photographs or old woodcuts or depictions of people who were working in terrible conditions, you think, well, I guess that's capitalism for you. And you remember that from your sixth grade textbook. And what you don't remember is the reason people worked in those conditions in, the, in those days, it wasn't that all the rich people were hoarding all the wealth and they were hoarding all the fancy furniture and all the plasma TVs for themselves and just refusing to share them with everybody. It's that that's what happens when you live in a desperately poor society with very little productivity per capita. That's what happens. It's unavoidable. It's a fact of nature. But as capital accumulation occurs, you get out of that, that problem. So in current events, as in history, events generally are portrayed in ways that flatter the regime. And we see this all the time in the headlines today. If we didn't have revisionism, the headlines of today become the history of tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like the content, subscribe to Philosophy Insights.